making sure children are healthy, safe, loved, ready to learn, succeeding in school and in life. This is Our Children, a program brought to you by the Children's Trust. So when the hours are long and you start to feel tired and you wonder just how much longer you can go on, just remember that you are changing lives. They want me to be fearless. <laughs> Is this what I'm supposed to feel less? I want to thank the Children's Trust because of your funding, our children have received so many programs. All of our families are willing to give up precious time with us so that they know that we can help others and that they know what we do is so important for the families that we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no shortage of champions for children in our community. So please join me in thanking all of the nominees for the praise that they deserve. Good morning, I'm Ileana Varela with the Herbert Wertheim College of Medicine at FIU. And I'm Jim Hodge, President and CEO of the Children's Trust. Together we welcome you to our children. Well, you just got a sneak peek at the 11th Annual Champions for Children Awards ceremony, but there is a lot more to come. Each year, the Children's Trust publicly recognizes individuals and programs doing extraordinary work on behalf of children and families. These are people and organizations you may not know, but you should. So today, we are going to share their emotional stories. The David Lawrence Jr. Champion for Children Award is named after the illustrious founder of the Children's Trust and former Miami Herald publisher, Dave Lawrence. Previous award recipients have come from numerous fields, ranging from religious community to the judiciary. Like those who come before, this year's honoree has blazed a remarkable trail. Let's introduce you to Dr. Michael Deshoney. Since his arrival in Miami in 1980, Dr. Michael Lashoni has helped to improve the lives of more than 25,000 children in South Florida and even more around the world. Dr. Lashoni is at the forefront in the fight against childhood epilepsy, and it is here at Nicholas Children's Hospital that he developed the internationally recognized Comprehensive Epilepsy Program, which changed the way children with epilepsy are diagnosed, monitored, and treated. A chronic epilepsy is the only chronic neurological disorder that we can cure. If you think about it, there are a lot of other chronic neurological problems, but you kind of live with them. With epilepsy, we have a chance to really stop the seizures completely and turn lives around. And if you can do it in children, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Back in the 80s, Miami-Dade County lacked the resources to care for children with epilepsy until Dr. Deshoney and his collaborators established Florida's first epilepsy monitoring unit. It provided the crucial step needed to diagnose specific seizure types and plan optimal therapy. By 1984, children suffering from uncontrollable seizures were finally able to undergo successful surgery to cure their epilepsy. He's brilliant. And when he came down here, he had a vision. And that's what I would say is his real contribution. People were saying things like, oh, you can't operate on children. They're too young. But he knew differently. One of those children was Tanya Davis's son, Mason, who was on massive anti-seizure medication. The family drove nine hours from Georgia to Miami to see Dr. Deshoney. We just kind of feel like Dr. Deshoney gave Mason a second chance at having a halfway normal life. He had the surgery at the age of five. He's 15, minimal episodes, and he's just a normal teenager. Catherine Donahoe came to see Dr. Deshoney at age 15 after suffering from seizures since the age of 10. She was told by numerous hospitals in the Northeast that her case was inoperable. 
But after surgery, and now at age 21, she has her life back. Shona came in and he changed my life. Like, I did not know that, there, that this was possible. I've just got this independence. I've got a boyfriend for almost two years. And I owe that all to Dr. Dushoni. He's the best. Having this kind of impact in children's lives is Dr. Dushoni's greatest reward. To take children who have serious medical problems like epilepsy, take the seizures away, and give them back a productive life where they can function as normal adults and work in our society is something that actually all of us are giving back to the community when we do this. Dr. Dershoni's tireless efforts have been the driving force behind the success of the Comprehensive Epilepsy Program, where hundreds of pediatric epilepsy teams from around the world have come to train. There's a legacy, the Comprehensive Epilepsy Program and the entire neurology department is number seven in the country, and this is from a community hospital back in the 80s. So that in of itself describes where we are and where we've come from. Despite all his hard work, Dr. Dushoni still can't help but feel a sense of wonder at how it all came together, wearing his heart on his sleeve. It's amazing what we've done. It's, it's remarkable. It's just wonderful. It's like creating a Picasso. You know, it's like creating something out of nothing. We really care, and we can cure them. It's, inc it's, inc <laughs> it's incredible. If it was up to me, I'd give him every award that there is. Here's to you, Dr. Dushoni. <laughs>but because I became a father. Had our first child uh, two months before my primary election, and it dramatically changed my life. I mean, every parent's perspective changes when they have kids. And when I found out that there were a lot of kids in this community in particular that did not have health care, I put myself in the footsteps of the parents. The most rewarding part of my job is working with kids because what I've seen throughout the years um, and again, I always say we should be, government should be the voice for the voiceless. For these state lawmakers from South Florida, public service is a labor of love. That's why Representative Jose Felix Diaz and Senator Rene Garcia embarked on a mission to eliminate the five-year waiting period preventing legal immigrant children from having access to kid care, Florida's subsidized health insurance plan for children. The legislation they both sponsored is one of their proudest achievements but it took many years for their efforts to come to fruition. This legislation has been on the books for four years. We've been trying to get it passed. Senator Garcia was really the first one to present it in the Senate, and it was almost impossible to think it could pass when the first fiscal impact came. Early sure estimates predicted that making kid care more right readily right available right to right legal right immigrant right children right would cost the state almost half a billion dollars more per year. That's when Diaz, Garcia, and a host of child advocates went to work to make the numbers add up in the state's favor, to turn the tide of support in favor of children. We kept on pushing and pushing and pushing until they realized that it would be a cost savings, a net savings, a net positive for the state of Florida because you now insure all these children that are no longer going to be using the emergency room as their primary care. Their perseverance finally paid off when the Speaker of the Florida House announced his support for the bill on session's opening day, something that Representative Diaz will never forget. I got chills from my feet uh, to, the, to the top here, and it, it was really one of the coolest experiences of my legislative career to go into a session not knowing that one of my bills was going to become one of the top priorities for my chamber. Thanks to the support of many co-sponsors and child advocates, the bill passed unanimously in the House and was soon followed by victory in the Senate. 118 yeas, zero nays, Mr. Speaker. Show the bill passes. Members, by your vote, 248 will be recommended favorably. 
According to the Florida Agency for Healthcare Administration, nearly 17,000 children previously ineligible for kid care and Medicaid could receive coverage with monthly premiums ranging from zero to $20. I just commend you for your persistence, your perseverance, and everything you have done for the children of Florida. It is truly a legacy. By having this legislation on the books and parents know they can take care of the kids. They don't have to wait to go to the emergency room. Number one, it's a peace of mind for the family. Number two, has, we have a healthier child that in turn will stay in school. And number three, it saves the state a boatload of money. And on July 1st, 2016, Kid Care enrollment began for these families for the first time with optimism and opportunity. Today we take a big step forward guaranteeing that immigrant children here in the United States legally receive access to the same affordable, comprehensive health insurance as every other child. It's something very important because it helps us to insure them. It means we can take them to a doctor when they're sick because having a child without insurance is not right. I thank them very much because now I'll be able to offer them, besides a good education here, they will also be offered excellent health. And for longtime friends and former college fraternity brothers, Representative Diaz and Senator Garcia, this victory was made even sweeter by the deep admiration and respect they hold for each other. It was one of the toughest bills that I've worked on in my legislative career and to have somebody on the other side that I respect and admire and who I uh, call a real friend was uh, really special for me. I think he's a really talented guy, but more importantly, he's a great human being. Maybe it wasn't me. I think it's Pepe that got it passed. So he's a true uh, champion for children and an advocate. He, 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 he wears his heart on his sleeves. And he really does, and you see it when you talk to him and, and the legislation that he presents. He's very passionate about the issues. Yeah, he's someone that uh, I will file legislation with time and time again because of those reasons. We have a recognition. There are many others who labor quietly with little fanfare and recognition. Amber Wilcox is one of those people. Starting her day as a middle school teacher and ending it in a program in East Little Havana. Let's show you how this year's award recipient for excellence and direct service to children and families is making a difference in the lives of others. The excitement of engaged students. <gasps> but this isn't school, nor is this Amber Wilcox's primary day job. She comes here after working a full day as a middle school teacher. Here at the Leadership Learning Center, Wilcox and her students are both working extra hours, and co-workers say they are astonished by her energy. The moment she steps into the classroom and she's with the kids that's left behind, it's like, it's a new day. You wouldn't even think that it's 3.30 in the afternoon, you think maybe it's the morning. That is where you notice it. Let the wild rumpus start! <laughs> Wilcox's work isn't confined to the classroom. With advanced degrees in special education, she devotes long hours to analyzing each student's test scores to map out the best approach for children at this trust-funded program at St. John Bosco in East Little Havana. Where does such passion come from? It turns out there is a personal connection. Years ago, Wilcox witnessed her own brother's academic challenges. Attention deficit is, is the most common um, struggle that children have nowadays that kind of impedes their, their academic success. And I, I think of him, I think of my brother and, you know, how he kind of really didn't make it, actually. He, he, didn't, he didn't graduate high school. Um, and if he had maybe received the type of, you know, interventions or assistance early on, um, he may have. One student in particular stands out as an example of just how those challenges can be overcome. He had suspensions in kindergarten, probably over 20, over 20 suspensions. Giving him individualized attention, letting him know how he was acting was not right. Um, I would say by third grade, um, he had completely cleaned up his act. Take it from mom. Que estuvo constante con Carlos y Carlos 
So Miss Amber was constantly working with Carlos. It was Carlos, 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 giving him homework. Carlos was talking a lot to her and it was constant. She was so persistent with Carlos. And so I thank her. I give a lot of thanks to Miss Amber because of her many years here. And to me, I consider her my sister, my sister. Today, Wilcox shares her passion with the entire staff where she oversees instruction for middle school students. As a child, Wilcox once dreamed of helping special needs students by traveling to Latin America. And now... The, the countries have come to me. <laughs> rewarding is its not even the word rewarding. It's definitely something I take home with me every day. The students, they take home a lasting lesson, a lifelong love of learning. In Hialeah, there is a little-known child care center that was passed on from mother to daughter and methodically built into a top early childhood education program beloved by the generations they've served. Sylvia's school was the first of three awarded program of the year. A mother's dream of opportunity for her daughter in a new country now spans more than a half century of educational excellence for South Florida children. For generations, Sylvia's school in the heart of Hialeah has been offering the highest quality bilingual education to young learners from birth through grade three. My oldest daughter attended here at Sylvia's school and I was so impressed with the curriculum and how they Engage with the students and now I have my granddaughter who is four years old and she is doing phenomenal. Boasting two generations of dedicated leadership, Sylvia School is the creation of Sylvia Aguirre, a newly arrived Cuban immigrant in the early 1960s, looking to give her daughter, current director Sylvia Rastia, the opportunity to succeed in the land of opportunity. My mom is the one that started the center and I was actually her first student. I graduated from Florida International University, took the role as teacher first, my mom was the director, and then I assumed the responsibility of director in the last 25 years. I am proud of what my daughter and the whole family work very hard, and I'm very proud. Arrastia describes the school's mission as one to provide a developmentally appropriate environment which meets each child's unique educational requirements while recognizing the parents and families as the children's first and most important teachers. We believe every child deserves a chance and we really try to work with the whole child, the whole family. We have an open door policy so our parents can come and leave as they wish. They can come have lunch with the children if they like. We have all different kinds of activities throughout the year. We are always invited to be here. The family is definitely a collaborative effort with the teachers to get the students to where they need to be. A big part of Sylvia School's recipe for success is the staff's commitment to ensuring that their day-to-day -day work is positively impacting the children and the families they come into contact with. of this commitment is the center's voluntary participation in Quality Counts, Miami-Dade County's quality rating and improvement system for early childhood education programs funded by the Children's Trust in collaboration with the Early Learning Coalition. A contributing factor is increasing the qualifications of staff. Every month we have trainings. We gather together like every week so to see what we can improve because of the school's location and its large Hispanic population, the bilingual curriculum at Sylvia School is a huge part of its attraction. I'm a teacher. Yo soy la teacher. With staff support, family encouragement, and lots of nurturing, Sylvia School provides a haven where children of all intellectual levels can learn to their highest potential. Parents drop them off early in the morning, and they expect us to teach them to love for them and care for them. So I love what I do, and it's, it's my life. My father lost his sight as a child, but that didn't stop him. This is why I know organizations like Lighthouse for the Blind are so critical to helping blind and visually impaired children tear down every obstacle in their path. It's why the Lighthouse Blind Babies program was selected as another program of the year.
It might look like a fun children's group, but listen carefully. These little ones are learning with their ears and fingers, even noses. It's a play group for blind and visually impaired babies. And because of a change in emphasis through the support of the Children's Trust, parents are seeing results they never expected. Big improvement with him. He learned, he settled down more, he listened, and he'll, he'll talk. He's very outspoken. When he came here, he wasn't talking that much. Now he's, he can hold good conversation. What's changed? Teachers and parents together are now following what's known as the evidence-based curriculum. It's a set of proven techniques drawn from discoveries in the growing field of early childhood education. And at the Miami Lighthouse for the Blind, they're being adapted to the visually impaired. I would definitely say the Miami Lighthouse is breaking new ground in this inclusion model, and we're very excited to see what the future holds. For new parents, the news that their child has a disability often creates anxiety and fear. Erica Berger once felt that way, but with the Blind Babies program, she beams about her daughter, Emma. She's capable of doing everything that my other two daughters are capable of. I've really been given hope that even though she may learn differently, she still can do everything that any other child can do. It's just gonna be in a different way. The key to the program, home visits like this one, where teachers train parents in the hands-on skills they need. Everything from lesson plans to the type of paint to have on the walls. Parents wind up becoming the students alongside their kids. Now that we have implemented parent as teachers, we see more family engagement. It's so easy for a blind child to just be left alone. Children learn through play. Children learn through interaction. Children learn from their parents, their family members, and their teachers. And that's what we do in our Blind Babies program. Yes, before I, I used to be afraid, like years ago. Not now. Now I feel like more comfortable. Next up, expanding the program to pre-kindergarten. The objective, to give these children a level playing field as they enter the public school system. You know, when my two children were born, no one handed me a set of child rearing instructions. We all sort of learn as we go, which is precisely why raising children comes with many ups and downs. This final program of the year, run by the University of Miami, is making sure that the families it serves have many more joys than sorrows. You did it! You knocked it down! Good job! Nice label praise. We're becoming more and more involved in this play. These parents and their children are learning how to interact, how to communicate more effectively, and how to transform their relationships and their lives for the better. You're doing a great job playing gently with the toys. They are participating in Parent-Child Interaction Therapy, or PCIT, at the University of Miami. The program is for families with children who display behavioral problems that parents are unable to cope with on their own. What makes PCIT unique is that therapists coach parents through an earpiece, teaching de-escalation methods and positive interaction that result in improved behavior. It's called life therapy, and the outcome can be life-changing. He was having tantrums on the floor and stuff like that. With this program, they put a little earpiece in your ear, she's watching you, you're seeing, okay, we're interacting together, and she gives me tips on, you know, oh, you should do this, or just ignore right now, or right now you should try to distract. If their kids are getting into trouble at school, or if they're having difficulties listening at home, our job is to help them be able to relate to their kids better and also learn more effective discipline strategies. Funded by the Children's Trust, the program works with families for free and for as long as it takes. These live therapy sessions through one-way privacy glass are helping Erica Wooden discover new and better ways to relate to her son, Cornell. 
Before, it used to be so much frustration between both of us because we couldn't communicate with each other. He used to try to express things to me that I didn't know he wanted. So it's more joy is me being able to figure out what he wants now. Tantrums have declined, so I don't feel bad at all when I have to take him somewhere because I know a tantrum is not going to occur because I use these skills with him. Let's focus on describing his behavior. Good job building the blocks. So that's a nice label praise. When psychologists start working with a family, the child is often described as being out of control and parents are at their wits end. Then, in just three of four sessions, everyone begins to see improvement. There are moments during the course of therapy where you can see where it happens. So you can see, ah, I remember five weeks ago, this would not be happening. You wouldn't be smiling at you. You wouldn't find this fun. I like when we work together. It changed like our lives. It helped make Matthew listen better to me, help me understand how to treat his behaviors that I was seeing, and it really helped both of us. By teaching parents how to relate to their children through play and other techniques and discipline in more positive ways, PCIT is reducing the risk of child abuse and helping to strengthen bonds between children and the parents who love them. It's not an easy road up front, but that initial investment will pay dividends for that, that child's lifetime. The work that we do changes families and changes lives, but it also changes us as we, we grow and benefit so much from it as well. For this experience in total, I would definitely give it 10 stars. It's so much of a blessing to have. Jim, these are always such great events. I know this was your first. What, what struck you as the most meaningful part of Champions? Yeah, there was a couple of meaningful parts. One is that you have unsung heroes working for children and families in this community. And it was our day to bring them up on stage and recognize them in the beautiful it's Adrian Art nice. Center in front of a very large crowd. So that was special. And what was very moving, and there was not a dry eye in the house, is when you had mothers of children, victims of youth violence and gun violence that came on stage with pictures of their children. Wow. I think that youth violence, we need to eradicate that in Dade County, and we will be committed in doing so. Well, hopefully we can do that, yeah. and we'll be back again next year with another yes. Champions. Yes, Thanks for watching this edition of Our Children. Now get on out to the Children's Trust Free Family Expo taking place all day today at the Miami-Dade County Fair and Expo Center until 5 p.m. There's not a moment to lose. See you there. Our Children is brought to you by the Children's Trust. The Children's Trust invests in programs and services that help make children healthy, safe, loved, ready to learn, succeed in school and in life. To access its funded programs and services in Miami-Dade County, visit thechildrenstrust.org because all children are our children. The Free Children's Trust Family Expo is back and better than ever. Don't miss the Children's Trust Family Expo, Saturday, September 10th from 10 to 5 at the Miami-Dade County Fair and Expo Center. For maps and schedules, visit thechildrenstrust.org.